Welcome to a conversation with a community leader sponsored by Leadership Kitsap, and I'm Kerry Bozeman, your host. I'm the former mayor of Bellevue and the former mayor of Bremerton, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing the boss here at BCAT, John Rauch. John, welcome. Thank you. It's good yeah, to be here. I, I say welcome, but you, <laughs> yeah, you're already here. I should here. welcome you. You should welcome me. And John, you've been out here, is your title director? Uh, public access manager. Public access manager. Yeah of the uh, BCAT, and right. BCAT stands for? Bremerton Kitsap Access Television. Okay. Mouthful. And, yeah, and how long have you been here? Uh, 18 years, 2002. 18 years. Yeah, well, great, I'm, I'm looking forward to our conversation, John. As I do with most of my guests, wh uh, what brought you here? What brought you to Kitsap County? What's uh, your background? Uh, well, I, I started, I, I was going to say, aside from splitting logs for building a log cabin when I was a kid. No, that's well, that's <laughs> a good story. <laughs> I stole it from Abe Lincoln, though. That doesn't <laughs> help. No, I, I, uh, I, I was born and raised in Seattle, and I moved out to Kitsap in 1990. And uh, uh, I What was high school did you go to? I went to Rainier Beach High School. Oh. We, uh, down south Seattle. What did your parents do? Uh, my dad was a high school teacher. Oh. Um, he was there at Rainier Beach for quite a few years and then uh, 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 went over to um, Garfield. Oh, yeah. And then uh, my mom was a homemaker, and, and uh, they did really well for themselves in terms of, you know, getting their life in order, and they retired at 55. Wow. So. And what they do, travel, that kind of thing? A, a little bit, mostly. Um, uh, they were both kind of crafty people, so a lot of painting and photography and you know. You have brothers and sisters? No, I'm the only you're one. You're the only, you're yeah. the only child, I'm huh? the only one. I'll be darned. Yeah. And uh, did you go to college? or? Yep. I, uh, after high school, I went to Bellevue College, yeah. or community college back then. Right. And got my Associate of Arts uh, um, in, in general studies, and I transferred over to Washington State University. What'd you major in there? Uh, uh, television, communication. Oh, really? Yeah. So this is something you wanted to do? You all Since my you life, yeah, I tell you. Did I, you have? Were there any? Was there anything in high school that stimulated mm -hmm. this? Yeah, they had a little television station in, in high school, oh. and uh, I didn't really get much hands on. But uh, as a hobby, I had uh, I, d I made little radio shows, you know, like on tape recorders. Uh -huh. And uh, and when I was at Bellevue uh, Community College, they had a really good radio station. There. Right. Um, so I was like, I was going to go in for an accounting degree. And so I was the bookkeeper for the radio station and decided they had a lot more fun. Yeah. So I switched. <laughs> well, you know, when I was in the Bellevue City Council, um, we started doing our broad, we started televising the council mm -hmm. meetings. And I think the station was out at the community college, if I remember correctly. Could be. Yeah, and that was back in the early 90s, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, that was a good place to go. That was... Yeah, it was a good school, still is. Mm -hmm. My yeah. daughter graduated. She went through a four-year degree there in their interior design. Yeah, I was in Bellevue when they first started opening that school. Yeah. And now I don't know how many students. They have 20,000 mm -hmm. students or something like that. So you went and got a degree. So you got a degree. You were interested in television. Um, you wanted to be behind the camera. I right, assume. yeah. Right. I didn't want to be in front, that's for sure. So what happened after that? Uh, well, it was that was back in the days when you got out of college, you could pretty much get what you wanted, you know. So I ended up working at uh, Cairo Television. Oh, you did for for thirteen years. Wow. Um, what was your job? Um, uh, ultimately, was an editor. I mean, I, I, not the you know, administrative editor or anything like right. that, but the television, you know, uh, film editing and yeah. tape editing, and uh, so uh, you know, actually the first nine months of my job I was a production assistant but you know in those nine months I got to fly in helicopters I rode around oh. on a caboose on a freight train I right. went everywhere so in, Western in the Washington. news department yeah I was in the news department okay and so uh, um, that was really interesting it taught me a lot about thinking on your feet and you oh, know, yeah. teamwork and uh, yeah. and uh, I liked I liked it at the time because uh, back then News had a final stopping point, you know. Five o'clock news, it was the end of the day. Right. Now, nowadays, the news just keeps coming it at you all the going. time, you know. Well, so. you've got, you know, you've got <coughs> the cable news stuff that goes 24/7, yeah. right? Yeah. So, 
Well, you graduated from high school. You were interested in getting into television, not radio, television. No, I was big in radio, oh, but I was really bad at it. Oh, well, you got a pretty good voice for it. Well, but I uh, I freeze on the air, so that's not helpful. Uh, I worked at a radio station. <laughs> you freeze on the air. <laughs> not good, John. No, it's really bad. I was really good at making commercials, and that was the thing that carried me through. So uh, in in college, I made commercials for radio stations and such. Yeah. And so, but I got an on air uh, job in Colfax, Washington, oh. and I was there for like five months. Um, I got so many complaints that. <laughs> what were you doing on air? <laughs> I was uh, I was they call, call it a board operator, and so I was there on weekends. And I would make sure that all the, the network, like football games and things like yeah. that came up. But in between, when there was a break, I would, uh, you know, give the weather and the, and the uh, you know, time and, you know, what, what little news tips that were happening. But um, the farmers out there wanted uh, the weather given to them in a specific way. And I never quite hit the mark <laughs> on that. So my career Colfax, in radio was... Colfax, Washington. Yeah. Huh? That's a little farming town. Yeah, it is. You go through there when you're going to WSU. Yeah. It's a little town, but it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of millionaires out there. <laughs> yeah, and you know, radio stations in these smaller towns, they do pretty well, I think, they, don't they? They Financially? do great. Yeah. They, it's a, I have a friend yeah. that owned uh, four radio stations around the state, and boy, he knocked them dead. Yeah, you, those guys, uh, the owner there would uh, uh, s canvas the, the town and make, you know, get his subscriptions for a year, and uh -huh. then off he goes. So okay, let's get to okay. Let's get, you get to how you to got it. here. All right. So, um, uh, so I left Cairo, uh, looking for bigger and better things, and uh, ended up on Bainbridge working for a company that made uh, uh, training films for EMTs and uh, fire departments. Oh yeah. And uh, it was close at home because I was living in Paulsbo, and uh, and then. Then the industry took a turn. Every all suddenly, all the media companies were buying and selling each other, and I was bouncing around from place to place. And uh, so uh, I had my own company making commercials. And again, a lot of loud turmoil in the industry. And fortunately, Shar Burnett, who used to be the manager here, right. she called me and said, "I hear you're looking for work, and and we'd love to talk to you." Oh. And I've been here since. I'll be darned. Yeah. Well, Shar, when I was mayor, Shar was our director or manager. And y when you came on the staff, I think that really helped her. Oh, good. And they, uh, you brought some expertise. Because Shar wasn't a television <coughs> radio person. She just always figured out a way to make it happen, right? Yeah. But uh, so that, so Cairo, high school, liked television. So you really followed your dream yeah. most of your life. You've yeah. done what you wanted to do. That's pretty. Exactly. That's, that's, uh, that's unusual. It is, yeah. It is unusual. And now you're here in public access television, mm -hmm. right? Public access television. Um, uh, so that's a pretty good training for running this operation. So a lot of people g get positions who are not really trained, they learn on the job, mm -hmm. but you, you brought a lot of expertise to this job. So we're fortunate to have yeah, you, John. Thanks. And I think you, you, you and your team have done a good job. Yeah, the team does great. Yeah. I know. I, I work out here doing this show, and, and boy, you show up, and everybody's ready, and they've, they're, they've got the thing ready yeah. to go. And, and uh, yeah. Okay. Um, how long has BCAT been here? How did it start? I think it's uh, about 1985, I believe, is when uh, they started. And um, the county started it? I think the city started the it. The city of Bremerton uh, started it? Yeah. Because okay. um, it was Bremerton Community Access Television back oh, then. Oh, yeah. And um, and so, uh, so what year would you say that was? I'm gonna say 85, 85. 86. Yeah. You know, and Long then a time ago. Yeah, and then in the 90s. Um, uh, so that was just Bremerton only, and then the 90s, the county came in and said, well, let's expand it to mm -hmm. the rest of the county, and they they chipped in, and so that it's a you know it's a collaboration between the county and the city, right? Right. Now. Well, that was very progressive of Bellevue, of uh, Bremerton. You yeah. Know, bees. A Bremerton um, starting up their own public access channel. Right. What kind of license do you have to have to run a public access channel like this? Do you a license, like uh, I mean, the state. No, it, no? Uh, it's mostly a franchise agreement between the city and uh, the cable company. Oh, the cable company. Yeah, and it's pretty much hands off. The FCC doesn't really have many rules about really? you know they don't interfere, because the beauty about access television is it's really the only place where you can come in and 
say what you want without it being filtered or edited or anything right. like that. There's no. That, that's what it's for. The, you know, so BCAT, we're, uh, we're we wear three hats: public education and government. A lot of cities. Public education and government. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of cities will have if they have those three, they, they're separate channels. Oh. And BCAT. You go mushes them all together into do one. All three. Right. So, so it's been here, Big Cat, we've been doing public access television here for 40 years, something yeah, like that. I guess so, years. yeah. Uh, is, how do you fund the operation mm -hmm. of Big Cat? Well, the... Because uh, you don't run commercials. Right, television. it's non-commercial. It's got to be right. non-commercial. So everything we do has got to be, you know, uh, strictly uh, non-profit or, you know, so... Right. Um, the funding. Well, what's, the, what's the cable association? Who are we with? What, is there a cable or cable company that yeah, we're with? Yeah, com uh, uh, Comcast oh. and, and and Wave Broadband. Comcast and Wave Broadband. Yeah. Okay, all right. We'll talk about that. Sure. One. Well, the funding comes from. Um, uh, there's a thing called uh, um, franchise agreements that. Uh, uh, so the, the money from the franchise agreements comes to city. So say Bremerton. And that's for use of right away. So the cable company can use, you know, the mm -hmm. power poles and underground, you know, uh, mm -hmm. things that are owned by the city. So part of that is that they fund uh, the channel. Um, so uh, that, so Bremerton takes all those funds and puts it into uh, BCAT. Bremerton's kind of mayor, because when I was mayor of Bremerton, I think with Laura Lyon, organizes a yeah, lot of this. Yeah. She basically yeah. saved us from the recession. She did. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. Laura. Um, so it all it all pretty much runs through the city of Bremerton now, right? Pretty much, yeah. The the county you know provides this building. This is a county building. Oh yeah. Uh, they what was this building before? It was a uh, radio station. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it worked out perfect. Didn't oh, it? it's a great building. Yeah. yeah. And then the, we used to have our studio downtown. You know the Comcast right, the old building. Comcast building. And. Uh, there was an agreement, and they basically duplicated the studio there here, so they added onto the building, and so we're sitting in the exact duplicate of that building. Yeah, nice. So, how many employees do, do you have, and what are their titles? What do they do here? Okay, we've got three full-time people: myself, um, the access manager. We have uh, Mike Spencer, who's the production administrator; yeah. uh, Ben Blankenship, who's the uh, uh, video specialist. Those are the three full-time positions. And then we have uh, James Mitchell, who's uh, uh, a production assistant, and uh, Constance Baird, who um, is a producer. Mm -hmm. And you don't see her in the building too much, but you see her on TV all the time. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that's it for now. We've got an opening. I need to, I need to get another part-time production assistant. Good. Are you, I would assume you're growing, right? Uh, yes and no. It, it, it uh, expands and contracts a lot. Uh, uh, we. We're we're growing in terms of what we do uh, and trying to become leaner and more nimble. Uh -huh. um, but um, sometimes the, the amount of work we take in, it, we're kind of max out. You know, I mean, so in terms of uh, what we do for the government channel, part of the channel, and, mm -hmm. and, and these little projects that we do uh, for the community. But the big gap is uh, the community uh, can make shows themselves, and we encourage them to do that. And that's where the growth really is uh, and needs, needs to take place. And people producing their own show. Yeah, and it's starting to pick up again. It's it's just that it takes a lot of work, and I don't think people completely grasp how much time it takes to make a show. So how does that happen? So yeah. if someone calls you and says, mm -hmm. I want to, I've got an idea for a show, yep. and I, so they have to produce it themselves at their own cost, right? Well, yeah, but it's not much of a cost because there's a membership here. It's a membership organization, so for for like like a, like let's say you wanted to make a show aside from this one yeah. uh, and on your own it's 25 bucks a year and you and what you you would get access to the studio we have equipment that you can check out what do you call it bcat membership or yeah. something like that no bcat membership 25 bucks a year yeah wow. no if you're if you're a non-profit or have a larger group it's 75 uh-huh and uh, we teach you how to use the equipment and help you coach you through your project and and uh, uh, and it, you know it just and that's where we're at right now. We have a handful of people who are in the middle of making things. And but if you have to go out to a location, yeah. you got to charge for that, right? Yeah, in some instances we do. Um, uh, if if it's if it's a uh, let's say like Olympic College has those uh, um, 
uh, the, the seminars, uh, they mm -hmm. do these seminars, the right. OC Foundation. Um, you know, if they supply the venue, the guests, the audio system and everything, you know, we'll, we'll make a deal and go out and we'll just do it for, because it's good, good yeah, content for right. the channel. Lectures. They have these yeah, lectures. right, yeah. lecture series. Right. But if um, somebody just comes in and says, listen, I need you here to do X, Y, Z, and that's all they are asking for, yeah, I'll charge them. Yeah, so there's a fee. Yeah. What, ar what area does PCAT cover? Uh, we cover all of Kitsap County and a little bit of Mason County. So there's no other public access channel. Is there another public access channel on the peninsula? No, there used to be. There used to be. Um, um, Not in Jefferson County or. Oh, Je that? yeah. Jefferson County's got one up in Port Townsend. Oh, they do? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I think there's like a little Hood Canal cable system. I don't oh, know really? if they have. Uh, I don't know if they do access there or not. But. Um, and then Bainbridge used to be really big. They used to have a huge uh, access channel. Oh, they did. What happened to that? Um, well, at the recession, you know. Funds got diverted back uh -huh. to the. the um, but you, we, you weren't covering like Bainbridge City Council meetings for a while, but you are now. Right? We are after they left, after they shut down, yeah. then uh, we we helped Bainbridge. Yeah. Yeah. So you've are uh, you've got all you've got the four cities. Yeah, in the not, not Port Orchard, but oh, not Port Orchard. Yeah, everybody else. Why and we do the Port, Port Orchard doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's bring them to the table, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to call the mayor of Port Orchard. <laughs> uh, so you cover all of Kitsap County. Uh, people can get you on Comcast and on... And on uh, Wave Broadband. Wave Broadband. Yeah, but if you really want to get the full full meal deal with BCATS, go to our website because we, we stream 24-7. Everything we produce is on on, on demand. Okay, and, and what's your website? It's uh, www.bcat.org. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. It's such a it's such a good thing. You know, we don't get nothing uh, news about our area rarely gets on television in Seattle mm -hmm. or any of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, really this is kind of the television station for kids up I know. Right? That's the that's the beauty of it. It's like we're the only one. There's there's a uh, South Kitsap High School's got a television channel for com uh, Wave, but uh, we're Do you work one. with the high schools. Uh, we advise. Yeah, I sit on the advisory committee and I try to get people to come in. And uh, sometimes they uh, have, uh, uh, you know, film film classes or something like yeah. that, and they they bring their videos for us. Yeah, uh, most of the places like uh, the city of Bremerton and city can all the ones you broadcast, they have to have equipment at the building, right? Right. How does that work? How does what, do that work? To, what do they have to have? How much? What's it cost them? Yeah. Well, um, so each city has a, 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 a their own franchise agreement with the cable companies, and oh. the cable and they get money from the cable companies called peg fees. So, like for instance, your cable bill will have like a twenty five cent per month fee, and all those add up and they get sent to the city. So the city yeah. can use those funds to buy the equipment. And oh. So that's what we. We rely, our, our agreements with these other cities are that they provide the equipment and then once it's settled in, then we, we will be the operator of the equipment and then we will give them a so lock-in. So you have to have somebody on site the night when you're yeah. broadcasting? Well, that's what, that's what we all do. James does, I do, Mike Spencer right. does. Everybody who works here except I know Constance. I'm a port commissioner and yeah. uh, our, our meetings are broadcast. We have someone out at the, out at the building yeah. that helps us out. But it's, that's your equipment, but we show up and operate that's it and, and get the channel. That's the way it works. Uh, and all the cities except for Port Orchard and the county are all... Uh, any, do you broadcast any school board meetings? No, I would love to. Why not? I mean, why don't you? Uh, I just I, I have not connected with them. It seems like the school board, I would school districts ought to want to be connecting to the public through this yeah, process. Yeah, I, I agree. I, that's been on my, my to-do list this year is to reach out. Yeah, that would, <coughs> be, that would be interesting. I'd like I'd like to see that. So you've got, basically you've got the Port, uh, port Bremerton mm -hmm. and you've got the, the county and you've got the three cities. Um, is there anybody else you're regularly doing? Uh, we started doing the Public Facilities District. Oh, you are, huh? Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Do, you don't do anything at the college? Uh, no, no, like not trustee meeting. No, no, nothing like nothing that. Nothing like that. We uh, 
yeah, the col right now it's just mostly the um, uh, those those series, you know, the the lecture series. Yeah. Uh, okay. But that's something I'd like to, you know, work better with the college and. Yeah. So let's talk about programming okay. for a station like this. Uh, how do you do it? What's your philosophy? I, f I, you know, I flip on BCAT when I'm flipping around, or I flip on to watch uh, city council meetings or something like that. I'm an old city councilman, so I get a big kick out of mm -hmm. city council meetings. Uh, how, what's the stra what's the philosophy and the strategy around how you f fill the time here at this yeah. channel? It's a uh, it's a little bit in flux because of uh, the technology and and, and people's uh, attention span so uh, you know we're contracted with all the meetings so that's pretty much gavel to gavel coverage of every meeting right. and so that fills up a lar large chunk of the, yeah. the station and then uh, we have the the public who submits programs and uh, you know there's a lot of churches who submit things like yeah. that so that fills up another piece of the you yeah, actually I've seen you broadcast church uh, meetings mm -hmm. right where the pastor gets mm -hmm. up and speaks right yeah and then the and then the rest of the time are uh, programs that um, we try to generate ourselves. Uh, and so uh, Constance Baird, who's our producer, mm -hmm. she's got her ear to the ground for interesting to topics. And so we, we, those, those programs kind of have to align with, you know, do we have the time to do it? Is it, is it you know, interesting visually, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and what we've done is we've gone to a, what we call the digital first approach to um, making television is that we'll when we make a show we turn it around quickly and put it online right away because you know for the cable channel you need a couple weeks notice to put put that you know mm -hmm. the, the uh, schedule in the papers and everything mm -hmm. it takes longer but if you see us driving around making a show uh, chances are in a couple of days you'll see it online mm -hmm. and then we fill it up we, we is it your goal of 24/7. I mean, you've got. You're yeah, yeah, we're we're on 24/7. You know, we have our reader board up a lot of the time, and but uh, we also have a, a new playback system that will, you know, kind of a randomly. Is there some pro programmatically you guys would like to do out here that you're not doing? Um, to be honest, I would like to get a lot more community involvement. I'd like to, you know, I, I think. Ultimately, it'd be great to be able to do, you know, high school football. Well, you're doing some high school sports, but right? that's another fantastic group called West Sound Television, and they ah. they provide that. But and it's on bring, BCAT. But then right. they bring it into BCAT. Right. Yeah, yeah they yeah. do a great I saw job. Saw a basketball game. Right yeah, back. they're very good, and then they're very diligent about getting something out every week. Right. So if if I, Joe or Mary Blow, and I've got an idea, mm -hmm. what do I do? Call BCAT and say, it, John, I want to talk to you about. A exactly. I've got yep. in mind. You go. Uh, you can go online at that www.bcat.org, and you can find all of our contact information. And, and uh, there's a lot of information how you to do cover, that. You cover. We're. I had more questions than I have time for, John. You cover certain uh, some special events like the Armed Forces mm -hmm. Parade. And that. What other big special events do you do? That's our biggest one. That's your biggest. Yeah, one. and uh, and the others are just catch as catch can. You know, they. Uh, we don't really have a uh, unless I'm forgetting I, I don't think we do well we do the great give we help with the great give you do yeah yeah and uh, those are two big live events uh, each year yeah but you can if uh, Port Orchard or not Port, somebody's having a parade or their funds a fathom or that sort of thing yeah you could go down we could do that camera down there yeah but that West Sound Community Television they they kind of have a they, they do that already so we Is there is there equipment or things that you'd love to have here you don't have that would help you be better? Um, yeah, boy, that's a good question. Uh, you know, we're, we're pretty good with equipment, and mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest thing is we need uh, uh, more connect, easier connectivity between the, the city halls that we work with. If right. we could get uh, away from the, f the, the cable system and more of a data mm -hmm. you know, streaming thing. Well, John, I think... Uh, public access television is really important to democracy and um, I'm a big supporter of public access yeah. television radio all that kind mm -hmm. of thing because you are non-political you you say people get a chance to say express themselves honestly and openly mm -hmm. and I think we're so lucky in Kitsap County to have BCAT and okay. I appreciate your leadership I mean you brought all this experience with you uh, Cairo Television 
college education. I mean, we, to be honest with you, we were very fortunate to have mm -hmm. someone of your experience here, John. So is there anything I haven't asked you that you want to say real quick? Because I'm running out of time. Yeah, I, I would, the only thing is I'll, I'll pitch that, you know, have the community use us because we're, we're here for them. Well, I hope the community hears that. <coughs> uh, call John, call the BCAD. If you've got an idea, if you've got something you're interested in getting on public television, uh, give John a call. We'll get you yeah. on. John, I've enjoyed it. I it went too. too Thank you. It went too fast. Yeah. So this has been a conversation with a community leader hosted and sponsored by Leadership Kitsap, and we'll see you next time with a conversation with another community leader. Leadership Kitsap is our community's civic leadership program. Leadership Kitsap fosters and empowers educated, prepared, and engaged community leaders. For over 25 years, we have cultivated leaders that work collaboratively to create positive change, dedicated to making our community a better place to work and live. We expose our class to Kitsap's leaders across public, private, and nonprofit sectors. We are happy to bring many of the conversations with these leaders to you. Strong leaders build strong communities. Thank <laughs> you.